So we'll go through these examples with calculations involving density relatively quickly. So to start it off with, <clears throat> we're being asked for the density of a platinum nugget that has a mass of 224.5 grams and a volume of 10.0 centimeters cubed. And then it specifies that we want it in varying units. So if we start this off, and I'm going to go kind of against my creed by putting the equals earlier, say grams per centimeter cubed is our density that we want. Okay, here, notice I'm just solving for what's given. I'm not actually using a formula. I'm going to do 224.50 grams in the numerator. Uh, actually, I'm going to shift that a little bit. 224.50 grams, and I want that in the numerator, and I'm going to put it over 1, because I'm not trying to use a formula, I'm trying to just follow the way the units tell me to do this. Now I'm going to do times 10.0 centimeters cubed in the denominator, 1 over the top. When I run the calculation, I'm going to get that answer, regardless of where I placed it. Yes, some people don't like having the 1s in there, and so we'll condense it into one calculation. I'd make the argument that if you can keep them separate, do so, because then you don't get confused, and it's not a question of having to memorize some silly formula. It just tells you the answer. Okay, So we could enter that in the calculator, and we'd have our answer for the first one. The harder one in this case, I'm going to leave the old work there, is that I also want to solve for pounds per liter. Okay. So I've got the units in the correct space, and you might say, well, how do you know the pound unit is going to be in the numerator? Well, grams is a measurement of mass, and so is pounds. So I've got my mass unit where I want it to be in the numerator. Right? Yes, it's not the correct unit yet, but it is the mass unit. So because I picked that one, I'll go ahead and start with that one. I want grams in the denominator so it cancels, and ideally I can go into pounds. And sure enough, there's my conversion factor. 454 grams is one pound. Okay. For the next part of this conversion, I have my liters unit, which is a volume. And you might say, well, but I don't have liters in the calculation so far. Well, I do have a volume unit, though. That volume unit is located where it needs to be in the denominator, so everything is okay. The next part behind this is recognizing how to convert. Okay, so in my experience, a lot of students have a hard time with conversions that are happening non-synchronous, async, oh man, not at the same time. Okay, notice that this conversion is happening in between our conversions, which tends to confuse students. Try to not let it confuse you because it doesn't matter the order in which we do this. For me personally, I would go into milliliters. That is a one-to-one -one ratio, as shown up here. Okay. Yes, that seems silly to include, but it shows me the unit conversion, and the unit conversion is what's going to tell me my answer is right. Not, did I just have to say, oh, they were equal when they weren't. Okay. So the units I would now have, I forgot to go back and cancel these out, whoops, get rid of the grams. Now centimeters cubed is gone, and I'd have pounds per milliliter. I don't want milliliters, so I'll cancel that. And just because I've been doing colors, what is the relationship between milliliters and liters? Well, milli means 10 to the third. 10 to the third goes with the core unit. Milliliters cancels. I would now have my correct answer. Okay. For those of you wondering why we didn't deal with that whole um, length measurement of volume and having to do it three times, that's because this conversion right here already has the cubed factored in, so we don't have to worry about that length conversion. Okay, We can then punch it into the calculator and get what our answer is. I completely forgot to do that, so if you need help with entering things in the calculator, talk to me. Oh, there you go, never mind. It's 49.44. Because we have three sig figs, our answer comes out to be 49.4. For those of you curious, I've got it written up there. Okay, density is a unit factor. How could we use this to set up a conversion? Okay, so we've got this big long question. 
take a second to go through and read it. How many grams of acid? Well, grams is my answer. Okay, and now I want to use something or write something on the left hand side to start with. Now the question is what do I start with? Because there's two things. I've got that and I have that. So of those two, what should I start with? I would make the argument that we should start with the grams per milliliter one because that has the unit that I want in it. Okay? That can help me simplify how I organize this to make sure that that unit gets placed correctly. Okay, because I want grams in the numerator, 1.84 grams over 1 milliliter. This set up the units in the correct fashion. I can now go through and say, well, what do I want to do? I need to get rid of the milliliters. Am I given just straight milliliters? Turns out I am. And I can just do 1, 2, 7, 5 milliliters. Okay, what is that going to be over? Well, it needs to be over 1. If it's a number other than 1, I'm not given 1,275 milliliters. If it's a unit other than milliliters, I'm not given milliliters. Okay? Uh, for those of you that would prefer the format 1,275 milliliters times 1.84, this is no different. It's just a question of deciding what you started with. Because how I talked about it first puts in the grams unit exactly where you want it to be you know where it was placed okay in this case it was a trivial system and it didn't really matter which one you started with because they were both on top okay so hopefully that explains it and I believe that's all my density questions so I'm gonna go ahead and advance slides and there we go so I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video